Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 FPS series. In today's video we are going to be finishing off our player animation and getting it all set up and getting it in the game. Now one thing that I do want to do before I do go any further is I want to quickly uh, fix a mistake that I made in the last video. That being that I've accidentally set up some crouching animations in here um, by simply miss clicking on it. These should actually be the backwards animations um, so I'm going to quickly fix this. Now an easy way to see See what names you've given your stuff is by pressing the little show animation names in the bottom section over here just click that and then from here if you've got any crouching ones or anything that shouldn't be there just simply right click it change it and then if you remember this one should simply be walk backwards in place and then do the same thing over here as well so right click that walk backwards in place so just find that walk backwards in place there we go now if you guys did have any trouble just finding out the location and where all of these animations should go just follow them off my screen here or alternatively you have got that little graph that i created inside of photoshop it's in the download link in the description anyway now that we've got that out of the way we can go ahead and save this asset it's perfect and that's exactly what we want to do with it. So now what I'm going to do is actually go into our animation blueprints and set up some of the conditioning to tell the engine what speed and what direction the player is actually going. Because on our graph it's all defined by the direction and the speed um, but without that information our animation blueprint really can't do anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this all up inside of my walk and run state. So just double click that to open it up. And then from there, what I'm going to do is actually introduce my walk run blend space to it. So just quickly drag it in and then hook this up to the final animation pose. Once we have done this, you can see we've got our direction and our speed on the left hand side of this little node here. This is pretty much asking us to input the direction and speed variables. Now, as of right now, we don't have any variables for it. And we've also got no way of calculating the direction and the speed. And that's something that we're going to be doing in today's video. So first things first, what I'm going to do is simply drag out my direction and promote it to a variable. And this is just pretty much creating a new variable link to this one and I'm just going to call this direction so exactly the same as what we've got now and then do the same thing for speed as well just click promote to variable you can do it in the bottom left hand corner if you want to as well it's entirely up to you um, but for now I'm just going to promote it just so I know 100% it's all linked and all good so that bit's all set up, we've got our variables, but now what we need to do is actually calculate the information for direction and speed. So that needs to be done inside of my event craft for our animation blueprint. And this is all going to be coming out of my event blueprint update animation. So this is basically going to be ticking and ticking and ticking and updating the animation um, based on the information that we're giving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by dragging this out and I'm going to create a sequence node. This sequence node is being created because I want to use additional pins later on, not just the one. So that way I can fire off additional things in sequence. Don't worry about it for now, just add it in there. And for then zero, just drag it out and type in cast to character. And the reason why I'm using cast to character as opposed to cast to third person character is because we won't be using the third person character blueprint later on. Instead, we're just going to be using this base one and then we're going to be adding our own ones later on. It's a bit more complicated than it sounds, but don't worry about it. And then as the object, all I'm going to do is drag this out and type in try get pawn owner. And that's just the top one. And then with this, now what we need to do as the try get pawn owner, we're going to drag this out and get in the actor rotation. And we're also going to get the actor velocity. And the reason why we're getting all of this is because we need to be able to calculate that speed. Sorry, let me just type this in. So get velocity. So the reason why we're getting this information is so that we can calculate the direction and the speed of the character. Now the velocity is pretty much speed as it is. So it doesn't make, doesn't really need too much tweaking to get that set up. And then the rotation is how we're going to get our direction. We're going to be linking that with the speed and I'll show you how to do that right now. So with cast to character, drag this out and type in calculate direction. And we get this little node here. Target is going to be itself. Velocity is going to be the velocity that we've just set up. And then the base rotation is over here as well. So just drag that in and that's all good. 
So what we've essentially done now is calculated our direction. What we need to do now is calculate our speed as well. So I'm going to drag this out and I'm simply going to tell it to set speed. And then with this, what I'm going to do is get our velocity and convert it into a float. And the way that I'm going to do this is by typing in vector length squared and then just hooking this up to our speed. And that is our speed variable all set up as well. And then the last one that we need to do as well is obviously going to be calculate direction. So I'm going to put that in there as well. So set direction. Just link this up in between and then return value for calculate direction should be hooked up just like that. And now we've got our very clean and simple blueprint for setting up all of this good stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and compile this again. And you can see we've got no errors apart from these two at the bottom. Now, this is pretty much our transitional conditioning. Um, bit of a mouthful, um, but it's nothing to worry about. That is pretty much telling our engine how, or not how, but when it should transition between the idle and the walk and run states. And the way that we're going to be doing this is by getting the speed. But we need to set this up. So the way we're going to be doing this is going to be part of our... Um, walk run states so if we go to swat underscore anim and bp anim graph and then walk and run inside of here we've got our idle and we've got our run that we created earlier on so you can see we've got these two little circles here like i said these are our transitional um conditioning stuff so basically we've got to go into this and we've got to tell it to do some magic pretty much tell it when to transition from the idle to the walk and run state so starting off with the first one, the one that actually takes it from idle to walk and run, go ahead and open this up. And then with this can enter transition, what we're going to be doing is checking to see whether or not the speed is greater than 10. If it is greater than 10, we know they're going to be walking forwards. And as such, they're going to be needing to be running or walking. So drag this out and type in float. And the one that we're looking for is greater than or equal to. Now, the first value is going to be our speed. We've got that already. And then the second value is simply going to be 10. And that is pretty much a reference to our speed. If they go more than 10, which is quite low, but it's basically moving, it's going to have them walking or running and the blend space is going to do the rest. So I'm going to leave that one now and I'm going to go back to my walk and run. And then I'm going to set up the second one as well. And this one transitioning back is pretty much going to be the opposite of what we've done already so instead we're going to be checking to see whether it's less than or equal to 10 so what i'm going to be doing is float and i'm going to be looking for less than or equal to and then the speed is going to be the first value and then the bottom one is simply going to be 10. so this if we compile it now we should have no errors and that is all good that is <laughs> it's come out exactly how I wanted it to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my anim preview viewer, uh, anim preview editor in the bottom left, uh, bottom right over here. And I'm just going to check the direction of the speed and make sure our animations are all working. So direct. So I'm going to set my speed up to something like, um, say, 400. So we've got a sort of medium paced walkie run and then direction. You can change that. And as you do change it, you can see the direction of the player moves. So that is everything working there. That's a little bit of confidence in what we've done. So I'm going to set this back down to zero for now. And now what we need to do is we actually need to get this character into the game. So what I'm going to do for a quick test is I'm actually going to go into my blueprints and I'm going to just quickly change out the third person character. So go to your viewport and then for our mesh, we need to go ahead and change this to the SWAT character that we created earlier. And then for animation mode, we need not animation mode. And then for anim class, we need to set this to SWAT underscore anim BP or whatever you named it earlier on. And you can see the character has now come to life. We've got that pose for our character. You can see he's standing there and he's holding our rifle. So what we need to do with this now is scale it up a little bit to make it fit within the capsule when it isn't it is within it at the moment but it's not filling it all the way so just drag that up and then with our camera we need to set this up again so my location is going to be zero zero and zero to get it back to the head and then for the rotation it's going to be zero zero and then zero and then if we just go ahead and just move this back to where it should be so what i'm going to do is drag this rotate it about 90 degrees, I think, 
and then up this way a little bit there we are so if we now just go ahead and tilt this down now you guys can fine tune this if you want later on it's entirely up to you but for me i think this is going to look good if i compile this no more errors that's fine if we press play now we should see some hands in the game but if you look down we've got our feet moving and that's going to be left right and that is working exactly how we want it to now we're stuck within the body a little bit but that's a really easy fix all we've got to do is simply just move our camera forwards because at the moment it's behind the head it's going to be clipping it will do that so i'm going to turn off my snapping as well over here um, and over here and what i'm going to do is just pretty much move this forwards a little bit press play let's take a look at it now so if we i think that looks about right now that i've moved it so press play look down i can see my legs i can see my arms um, and I can see everything. So that is pretty much everything for our character animation. What we're going to be doing is getting the arms and the weapon and everything to be aiming up and down with the camera. But for now, the actual character himself, he is pretty much done. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.